Hello, my name is Alex McGregor, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Move Shoot Move rotator for Nightscape images. The Move Shoot Move rotator is a small device that allows you to track the motion of the stars through the night sky. It does that by spinning your camera counter to the rotation of the Earth, and it keeps the stars still relative to your camera's sensor. This allows you to take a longer exposure of the stars without getting star trails, allowing you to lower your ISO and shut down your aperture, creating more detailed and higher quality images. Move Shoot Move offers a lot of different options when you're looking to purchase, and if you are wondering which option is the best for you, go ahead and click on this video right here. It will take you to my 2021 buying guide. And when you are ready to purchase, there's affiliate links down below and you can use the code Alex, A-L-E-X at checkout for 5% off. Now that you've got your rotator, let's go ahead and set it up. When you get it out of the box, the first thing you want to do is make sure you get it nice and charged up. For that, there's a USB-C port right on the side of the rotator and it's simple enough, just plug it in. And on the panel with the two buttons, you should see a little battery icon. When it's charging, it'll be orange, but once it's all charged up, it'll switch over to green and you know you're good to go. While the Move Shoot Move is charging, we can go ahead and set up a few of the other important items. The first one is this copper stud, and this goes right into this raised portion of the Move Shoot Move right and tight in there and then once you got it finger tightened you want to make sure it's nice and secure so you're going to grab yourself a screwdriver and just get it a little more twist right on there to make sure it's good now you're going to want to be able to attach your move shoot move to your tripod for that you're going to install an arca swiss plate this plate can go in the back side of the move shoot move if you install a 3 8 to 1 quarter inch adapter, but I really prefer for star tracking to attach it to the bottom of the tracker. So you set it on there and then thread it on, get it hand tight again, then you want to make sure that the rails of your Arca Swiss plate are running perpendicular to the Move Shoot Move itself. Then you want to grab yourself an Allen key or whatever your dovetail Arca Swiss plate needs to tighten it and make sure you get this nice and tight. And there you go. Now, as we start actually setting up our rotator, you want to grab your tripod here and then with your move shoot move, you might get different devices such as this uh, alignment wedge or a Benro three weight gear head or a simple ball head will work just fine for mounting your move shoot move to your tripod. So go ahead and thread it on there. Make sure that is on nice and tight. Then your move shoot move can slip into the wedge just like that. The next thing you want to install is the bracket that holds either the laser pointer or the polar scope. Whatever package that you ordered should come with one of those devices for aligning to the North Star. So to install your bracket, you're going to fully loosen these little white screws. You're going to slip it onto your move shoot move just like this and then tight it tighten these white screws to make sure it's nice and locked on there. The nice thing about the laser and the polar scope from Move Shoot Move is that they're both adjustable so you can calibrate them to be really, really accurate. If you want any help calibrating your laser, you can click on this video right here, or if you need to calibrate your polar scope, this video right here should help you out with that. You want to make sure that when you install the laser pointer and the polar scope, they're both pointed in the same direction that your copper stud is, that raised rotation plate on the move shoot move, because that will be pointed towards the north when you're out there at night. The next thing you want to do is grab either your Z or V plate or another ball head, whatever you're going to use to attach your camera to your move shoot move. And you're going to want to thread that onto this copper stud that you've set on the rotational plate on the move shoot move. Now your move shoot move is ready to go. Let's talk for a moment about your camera. The different settings and things that you might want to do before you're out in the field that could help make your night a lot easier. 
Obviously, before any photo shoot, you want to check things like your battery, your memory card, make sure you're all good to go there. Another thing that could be really helpful when we're taking pictures of the night sky is our inner velometer or a remote shutter release. This allows you to trigger your camera's exposure without actually needing to touch your camera. And that is really helpful for reducing any shake or possibly throwing your rotator out of alignment. I'm using the Pixel Pro WT2 283RX wireless timer remote control. It's worked really well for me and I have links down below where you can find this. One thing that could be really helpful when we're out there at night is to go into your camera and set up some custom shooting functions for your ideal ISO, aperture, uh, white balance, all of that stuff for where you're gonna start imaging at night. Then you can just swap it over to that setting and you should save a lot of time when you're out there. It can help a lot to plan out what your exposures are going to be before heading out there at night. So we can set our custom shooting function to that base exposure. And for a camera like this one, this is a full frame camera with a 24 to 70 2.8 lens. My base exposure when starting out with a camera like this would be ISO 6400, f2.8, and my time to avoid star trails will be about 15 seconds. That's a decent spot to start. It's a little bit dark, but it'll work well for what I need. So when we add the rotator, then we can start playing with these times and really get the optimal exposure for our camera. So if we take our exposure of 15 seconds and we turn it up to something like one minute, that can add two stops of light to our image. So we need to take those two stops of light away from somewhere. We're gonna leave this at 2.8 for our aperture so we can take two stops of light away from our ISO. We can go to 3200, that's one stop, and then we can go to 1600, that's two stops. So once we take our one minute exposure, we wanna really check our image and pixel peep to make sure our alignment is good and there's no star trails. If we look good at one minute, we can increase our exposure time even more. So let's go to two minutes. Still going to leave our uh, F number at 2.8, but then we can drop another stop of light from our ISO so we can go down to 800. If we're looking good at two minutes and we really wanna get the very best image quality we can, we can increase our time again here to four minutes. This is adding another stop of light. So let's leave our ISO at 800. Most every camera really likes shooting around ISO 800. So then we can take that stop of light away from our aperture. So we can go from 2.8 to F4. And this will help to reduce things like coma, chromatic aberration, distortion in the corners. Stopping down our lens can at times even have a greater benefit than lowering our ISO depending on which camera we're using. So this is a really good example of how to build your exposure. But while we're doing this, we also want to be using our histogram. We want to make sure that the peak of our exposure isn't too far to the left so that we're losing data into the shadows. So if our histogram is telling us that we're not quite bright enough, we might do something like this and raise our ISO back to 1600, stay at F4, and then stay at four minute exposures if we have really good success with our alignment. So this is where you can do some testing for yourself between your camera, your lens, and your ability to polar align. Really test out and get the best possible exposure. Again, using your histogram. We wanna make sure we're using the instruments our camera gives us and not just relying on the LCD screen out there at night. So now that we got our move, shoot, move all set up, when we're out there at night, the first thing we need to do is polar align our rotator. So in the Northern Hemisphere, we have it really easy where we can polar align to the star of Polaris, which is just barely off of the exact North Pole. So we need to be able to find Polaris. There's a lot of different apps you can get on your phone that will give you an overlay of the night sky. So those can be pretty easy, pretty accurate to find the North Star with. 
However, if you don't want to rely on one of those apps and want to be able to find it yourself, there's a couple of tricks that we can use. There's two really recognizable constellations that will always be able to guide you to the North Star. The one is the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is nice because it can be seen pretty much every day out of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. It just kind of does a rotation around the North Pole and you can look for the end two stars on the scoop part of the Big Dipper. Draw an imaginary line between those stars and extend it out into the night sky. The first bright star it comes to will be the North Star. You can also find the constellation of Cassiopeia, which kind of looks like a crooked W or a crooked M, depending on what time of year. And right between the constellation of Cassiopeia and the Big Dipper will be one star kind of out on its own, and that will be the North Star. So once you find the North Star, it's as simple as turning your laser on and using your uh, wedge or your three-way gear head or your ball head to make little adjustments to your move shoot move and bring it into proper alignment with Polaris. And if anyone is using the polar scope to align, watch this video right here. There's some really good tricks in there that will help you get the most accuracy out of your polar scope. So once you are all aligned, you can go ahead and attach your camera, slipping it into the ball head that is on the move shoot move. At this point, we wanna focus our camera on the stars. To do that, I actually use the live view screen on my camera and punch in to maximum magnification on the brightest star or planet visible. Then I put my lens into manual mode and slowly adjust that focus ring until that star goes from a big orb to a nice pinpoint. Then we know that we're properly focused on the stars. At this point, we wanna turn on our rotator. We do that by pressing and holding this button right by the end. All the lights will come on for just a moment. And then when it is rotating, our star will be illuminated and our N. The N and the S stand for Northern and Southern Hemisphere. So whichever hemisphere you're in, you can set it by using this button right here to swap between the two. And then you want to make sure your star's illuminated. If it's not, push this button right here that will go through the different rotational settings until you're back on that star. So this is the basic setup that you can do inside to make sure we're ready to go. Tonight, we're gonna go out and photograph some stars to put all of this into practice. Hey guys, real quick before we head out there, just wanted to mention two things. One is that if you're trying to polar align this in the Southern Hemisphere, I recommend purchasing the Australia kit from Move Shoot Move. It comes with this little bracket which actually holds your cell phone you can use your cell phone to align to the southern pole click on this video right here to see how i do that and the one other thing is if you have your camera and you have these straps on make sure you take them off so they don't have anything dangling off of our camera that might catch in the wind or anything like that um all right i think that is all for now and i'll see you guys out there tonight all right guys, I'm now out here on location, ready to set up my move shoot move. I already have the ball head installed on top. I'm using my Benro three-way geared head and I have it all set up and already pointed towards the north. I found Polaris, it's right above me there. So it should be really easy to polar align. So I'm just gonna set my move shoot move onto my base there, then I'm gonna grab my bracket that holds my laser pointer and my polar scope. I'm gonna slide this guy with my laser pointed at Polaris right onto the side of the rotator here and loosening these white screws. Make sure it slips on. Now I'm tightening these white screws. And now I'm going to uh, eyeball it up to Polaris. Okay, right there looks really close. So I'm gonna pop on our laser. Oh, we are a little bit off. So we're gonna walk this laser back towards Polaris. And we're a little high. So we bring it down, 
Now I'm putting my eyeball like right behind the laser to get it as accurate as possible. And right there, I feel like we're in really nice laser alignment, so I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna hit my button to uh, activate my polar scope light. And yeah, we are super, super close to exactly where we wanna be. So again, I'm just gonna make some really basic adjustments and we should be good to go now. So at this point, I'm gonna grab my camera, throw it on top and start taking images. Tonight, I'm going to be working with my uh, OMD EM1 Mark II from Olympus. It's got my 17 millimeter 1.2 lens on there and should be a really nice focal length to test out the Mushu move. So I've turned my tracker on by pushing this button right here, which has the N and the star illuminated. I'm going to set my camera on here. And now I'm gonna take an image pretty much like I didn't have the tracker at all, just to test out my composition. And I know the Milky Way is right there, so let's see how this first shot goes. I'm in manual mode. I'm gonna to go to F2 and 13 seconds and raise my ISO to 6400. I'm framing my image so that it's mostly sky with just a little bit of foreground here. I'm going to set up my two second delay and fire my first shot. Now we get to wait for 13 seconds. All right, time to review our image. And it looks really, really good. No star trails. I like my composition pretty well. So I was good at 13 seconds. Now I'm going to work up to 30 seconds and I'm gonna leave my aperture where it's at and I'm gonna shut my ISO down by one stop by going to 3200. Taking my next shot now. And 30 seconds is a longer time to wait for sure. Okay, reviewing our image. All right, so no star trails at 30 seconds. So I'm gonna go all the way up to 60 and now I'm gonna close my lens down to f2.8. We'll see how this one goes. All right, 60 second image is done. Time to review. And again, looks super solid. All right, so it seems like our tracking is working well. So I'm going to attach this intervalometer here so that I can increase my exposure time up to two minutes. And now I'm changing my camera shooting mode over to bulb and I'm closing my aperture down to F4. And I'm stopping my ISO down to 1600. All right, two minutes, here we go. All right, our image looks super good at two minutes. So now I can turn my tracker on, capture more of these images. Then I'll be turning my tracker off and we will capture some foreground shots. All right, so we are back inside and that was just an amazing night under the stars out there. So I set up my tracker just to record images for a while and I actually got 34 two minute exposures and had a really good tracking success rate. I chose the best 10 of these images to stack in Photoshop to get my final result. And I just went with 10 because there was so many clouds cruising through. If I tried to stack all of them, there's actually too many clouds in some of the frames to make them useful. But 10 images at two minutes makes an amazing result, as you can see here. So I gotta say a thank you to Move Shoot Move for making this video possible. Also Olympus cameras or OM systems as they're now called and Sarui tripods. 
uh, my favorite tripods you can use. I got links for those down below also. Uh, if you want to see how I compiled these images and actually made my final image, you can click on this video right here. We'll walk you through my editing process. And uh, that is all for today. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you are still looking to pick up a Move Shoot Move, there's links down below. And if you're purchasing through their website, you can use the code Alex at checkout for an additional 5% off. If you are looking for more instruction and want to get some one-on-one -on -one work time, I have links down below for my Zoom classes where we can sit down on the computer. I can go through anything from which kit is the best for you to purchase to how to edit your images or really get the most out of your tracker. We've had a lot of fun with those so far. So if you're interested, please click down below. I've also started to work with a company called Colorado Astrophotography and together we are running workshops and classes and all kinds of stuff from beginner to advanced up in the mountains of Colorado. So if you are in the area and want to get some personal work, click the Colorado Astrophotography links down below and it'll take you to the page where you can see our different options. All right, I'm done. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, my name is Alex McGregor and I'll see you in the next video.